Welcome to the Destination Arte podcast. Our goal is to interview 20 creators in 2020. I'm David. And I'm Mark. And we're building a community of people that work together to achieve creative excellence. And today's episode is halftime. Yeah. We're halfway through the year. We're 10 interviews into 2020. And we wanted to take a brief moment to recap the highlights and give you a preview of what's coming next. Uh, before we jump into that, I want to let everyone know we have a special announcement coming at the very end of the episode. So I know I hate it when people say, watch till the end, but be sure to watch till the end or listen to the end mm -hmm. and uh, stay tuned to find out what it is. Yeah, we're excited. We're excited. We're really excited about the announcement, but I am equally excited to get to recap these 10 episodes that we've had so far. We've had some great interviews, some great experiences. And so without further ado, let's just jump right in. David, who did we interview first? So starting in episode 77, we had a conversation about poetry with Dr. Lori Lou Jones. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated her honesty when she was talking about emotion and how creatives can deal with that, and especially writers. And she was admonishing us um, to deal with emotions and to self-examine the ways that we deal with extreme emotion. Yeah. And rather than let it control creative expression, let it simply become a motif or a theme in the piece that we're writing. So that was something I had not heard before and I felt like was very valuable and, and um, informative. Yeah, I agree. She is, has a, a lot of great insights into the writing process and um, I think it's a very healthy mindset to have. She kind of advocated that, that healthy mindset that you were talking about, which again, very encouraging. Um, and then our second episode was with Ryan Klein and that was episode 78. And I thought that episode 78 was just a great insight into the type of conversations that creatives love to have. Um, Ryan is someone who is always a pleasure to interact with. He's fun, he's energetic, he's passionate about what he does, and he uses it to bring joy to others, which is something I really appreciate about him. Hearing Ryan interact with anyone is enjoyable, but when you get two creative wits like David and Ryan in the same room, man, it is just the entertainment value is through the roof. And so that was super fun and exciting. And I would love to hear more conversations like the one we had with Ryan in the future. Yeah, Ryan has an open invitation to yeah. come on and just, <laughs> just hang out with us. And he is working creatively now. That's a bit of an update from when we did talk to him. Yeah, was... And so I'm excited about the progress he's made. And it was, it was really fun. And then in episode 79 came a chat with Adam Clegg about portrait painting. And I am just continually, perpetually always being impressed with the work Adam does mm -hmm. and as an as an artist and then his insights both from the art perspective and the business perspective which we weren't even expecting him to share when he came on we were blown away that he was that giving and generous um, they were invaluable to any aspiring creator whether you're a fine artist or not and so that was one of my favorite things from episode 79 with Adam Clegg yeah Adam Clegg is a great communicator he is an amazing teacher I've learned from him firsthand in in both workshop and private art lesson settings and if you guys at all get the opportunity to attend a workshop that he has is giving or even take his online course the instruction that he gives he's an, an extremely clear communicator um, and he is also just so knowledgeable about a subject matter so again yeah that was a that was a just a, a real privilege I'm glad we got to sit down and have that conversation with Adam and then to, to add on to that episode 80 we had our own sister Bethany Burrell yeah she came on and talked about the art of learning mm -hmm. and she has her MFA and she spent the last eight years in the art classroom both as a student and then as a teacher and as a graduate assistant and so if anyone knows about learning in the art classroom it would be Bethany and her admonitions were to be humble yet confident, critical yet kind, mm -hmm. and then curious yet cautious. And that was inspirational to me and informative because I'd never kind of really considered it from that perspective. And so anyone who's going to learn in the classroom or continue to learn as a professional as they're going throughout their career um, can take away just some really excellent insights from Bethany's conversation that we had. Yeah, I agree. Bethany is always uh, someone that I've actually had the opportunity also to learn from her in a classroom setting. That was a semester, let me tell you. And um, she is someone who always advocates for, like you said, that balance, that proportion of, you know, always making her students aware of, hey, here's what could be the, you know, the tendency you have in this area. Let's bring it back. Let's counterbalance that and work with that to make you, you know, a healthy, strong professional in the future. So again, great conversation we had with Bethany. And 
That leads us into another great conversation we had in episode 81 with Ethan Hansen. Ethan is someone that I always love hearing from. Um, I'm not quite old enough yet to have old friends, but when I am, Ethan will be one of my old friends because uh, we met when he was in high school, I was in junior high, and he um, is a very special friend to me because he kind of set me on the path to being the artist that I am today in, in a significant way. So uh, he's another one of those people that I, I hope this is just the beginning of the conversations that we get to have with Ethan in the future. Yeah, his his knowledge about church media yeah. is, is broad and vast because he's been doing it for 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. And, and he's not even, he's still a young man, but because he's because of the way, where he grew up and the situations he was in with his church, he just got to be plugged in right away, which I encourage for any creative, whether it's in your field of specialty or not, get yeah. plugged in right away, and you'll look back in 15 years and, and say, oh, wow, look at all this experience I have. Right. Um, the next person with a lot of experience, episode 82, Nathan Drew Shinnan, or Mr. Drew. Yeah. He sat down with us to talk about art supplies and so much more. That conversation is rich and deep. And my favorite thing about that interview was hearing Nathan's heart for learning shine through. And you can tell just by listening to him talk that he's in the business of art or teaching art Mm -hmm. because it's his passion and not because he just wants to pay the bills. And when you find someone, you come across paths with someone who is passionate about what they do and is good at it. And it's just a result of their life work kind of flowing into that thing. Um, You got to just soak it in as much as possible whenever you're around them. I completely agree. Mr. Drishinen is one of those people that I think perfectly kind of marries passion with compassion. He is one of the favorite instructors at the university that he teaches at in the art department, and uh, he is well beloved by his students. Uh, Another tremendous professional who is also loved by his students was uh, the individual we got to interview in episode 83. And that was actually the first time we got to sit down with an animation professional. And that's something that I was super excited about. Uh, David got to sit down with Mr. Dave Rogers. And Mr. Rogers has had a seasoned career in the animation world. And I think that he is someone who to me is the epitome of loyalty and faithfulness. Uh, That's not something that our generation is known for. So to get to just hear his testimony of how persevering in a skill builds value both to you and to the people that you interact with was I think an invaluable uh, lesson in that interview. Yeah, honestly, I listened to that interview with Mr. Rogers and it leaves me wanting more, which I think is the mark of a good interview, but also means that we will have to have him back because he he didn't even scratch the surface with the knowledge that he has, the experiences he's had. I mean, he has knowledge in every area of animation, 2D, 3D, mm-hmm. stop motion, yeah. um, you know, claymation. I mean, you, you name it, he's done it. And so I hope we can work again with him in the future and just kind of pick his brain even more to kind of draw out of him just all the things that he he has in there that he's willing to share. Yeah. Another creative that we hope is just the beginning of our interactions with was uh, the professional we got to interview in episode 84. And that was Drew Shetler from Meridian Films. He is someone that uh, I've wanted to talk to for a long time and getting to hear your interview with him was so inspirational. As soon as the interview was over, I jumped out of my seat and I started fist pumping the air because I was so excited about you know the, the sort of kindred passion that he had, um, that he shared. It's so encouraging to see another believer who is passionate about educating the church in the arts. Um, and also just so inspiring to see him pursue everything he does with a spirit of excellence. Um, he's someone who is really dedicated to his craft and believes that that um, has virtue and that that can bring God glory. So um, again, Drew Shetler, just uh, ho- another one of those people that we hope is just the beginning of our conversations with. Yeah, that was such an encouragement to me personally talking with him. And whenever I listen to that interview, listen to the sound bites that we had afterwards, um, I'm just always kind of uplifted mm-hmm. and re-energized and ready to kind of serve the Lord even more and yeah. pursue him with what I'm doing. So yeah, I hope that we can talk again, to all these people again, but you know, that, that's another one that you add to the list. Hopefully we can talk to Drew again or work with him on something. Mm-hmm. Um, another person that we greatly admire and respect came in episode 85, where Mark got to talk with Tim Uwe about creative block. Mm-hmm. And Tim has always been open and honest with um, his struggles with creative block. And yet, when you look at his work, 
it's clear that he's been able to make it through those moments mm-hmm. and master his craft and, and fight through the the creative drought that can come along in, along the way and and he produces excellent work and his work is so um, in animation you know they have a thing called readability mm-hmm. or likability and his has that like mm. you see his work and you're immediately drawn to it and you want to know more about it and I think if he had given up whenever he had that creative block come along, we would not be able to say that about his work. Yeah. He is really one of those uh, inspirational people that, like David said, is open about his story and then um, is also very encouraging to share and and a really clear communicator. I was really impressed with what he brought to the interview as far as like, you know, detailed kind of thought processes. If, you know, if you find yourself in this place of creative block, here's the steps to go through. And that was something that I found just really helpful uh, in that interview. And that brings us to our 10th one. And our final episode, we got to have a conversation with Corey Godby. And Corey Godby is a professional illustrator. He has worked um, with Disney. He's worked with the Jim Henson Company, a variety. He has also a lot of his own projects that he does. And I really appreciated his insights into those personal projects and how those have furthered his career. He really did a good job of um, encouraging us and creatives in general to pursue personal work and see what that is. I I can't even begin to say as eloquently or say with as great you know effectiveness the the ideas that he did. So go and listen to that episode with Corey. Um, it was just a tremendous privilege to get to sit down with him and talk. Yeah, if you're ever at a point where you feel so down on yourself that you want to give up, he has the roadmap for yep. how to get out of that point. Mm-hmm. In that interview, go listen to Corey say in episode 86. This is how I got out of that place in my life, right. which was incredible for us to hear a professional mm-hmm. admit to that, but also be so succinct and, and precise with, um, this is how you get out of it. Yep, so for we, sure. we were so grateful to talk to Corey and be encouraged by that. Uh, and that brings us to halfway, halfway through 2020, halfway through our interviews. We've got some more interviews lined up for you in the coming months, and we're scheduling remaining interviews. We're putting feelers out there. Uh, before the end of the year. If you want to hear the interviews that we've talked about in this episode or you want to catch future conversations, you can follow us on SoundCloud or Spotify or Google Play or Apple Podcasts. And then any um, interviews that we get video footage of, we'll put up on YouTube. And if you want to receive our monthly newsletter, send us an email, destinationarete, A-R-E-T-E, at gmail.com. Or if you have ideas of who we should interview, uh, you know, you've got someone that you've got a connection with you think would be a good fit for the pod. Connect with us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram, Destination Arate. Or like I said, shoot us an email with their name and their contact information. We'd be happy to reach out to them. And uh, we've also got a website. And is there anything on the website? Absolutely. The entire first chapter of Launch, our first Destination Arate webcomic, is up on destinationarate.com. So just go to destinationarate.com slash launch and uh, we've re-uploaded now that we've got the whole first chapter finished and so you can read it from start to finish um, in a nice format and it's it's really looking good. So we're excited about that. Thank you so much to Patrick Farley for all the tremendous yeah. work that he's been doing on that. Um, you can follow him at Patrick Farley Art on Instagram. And man, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work with him to create future chapters and get those up for you guys as soon as possible. All right, it's time. It's time for the special announcement. Thank you for listening this far. Mark, go take it away. Okay. We are super excited because on June 17th, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Central Time, we will be collaborating live with Keith Wang from Sentient Academy. Sentient Academy is an online fine art and art business learning resource. They're a website that specializes in fine art learning and art business learning. And I'm currently taking their art business fundamentals course. That's right. And I have learned so much. The, the value that they give you for your dollar is just I was blown away. I was expecting, I, I got the amount of value I was expecting from the whole course in the first video. And I was like, you're kidding me. And I, I, I am just blown away by how, um, how open they've been. They interview professionals. Uh, they have people from all different types of areas in art come in and talk and give their expertise, as well as Keith's expertise is really shines in the course from his, his business background. And that's what we're going to be talking to Keith about. We're going to get to interview Keith and pick his brain specifically about 
art business questions that I know I have and that a lot of other people have as well. So we're looking forward to that a live event on June 17th at 6 p.m. And um, where can they find that, David? Uh, sentientacademy.com. So tune in to watch live on the website. There'll be a link to the live stream. Mm -hmm. And then the audio of our conversation with Keith, we will share with you on our podcast, probably just the highlights. We might edit it down so it's not... You know, I think it's going to be a live stream for an hour, which will be amazing to get to talk to Keith for that time. Right. Um, but then it'll be available on the podcast two days later. And then if you sub end up subscribing to Sentient Academy, um, there'll be a possibility of being able to find the archive. So we're, we're pumped about this opportunity. Yeah. And we're excited to be uh, uh, having Keith on as our 11th interview of 2020. And so with that, we will see you guys next time.